the settlers who are uh, settling in uh, houses, Palestinian houses, Palestinian schools, mosques, uh, in the wholesale market, in uh, the bus station, all of these uh, sites uh, change to settlements. The water they use it to the swimming pool in the settlements yeah. more than what we, they, our people in the whole governorates. How they are dealing with the with students, look at the students' bags, you can fill them, how they are checked manually, daily like this way. We Another entrance to the mosque or to the area here surrounding totally closed because of the Israeli measurements here. This is the only area we can walk on exactly. the street as the settlers. They have closed the shops, they have barred the windows, people are in their own jail. Stones, right. Do you have that explained to me? One of the settlers is walking here. Settlers can walk freely here. They are controlled by the soldiers and the soldiers as well. You can see 400 settlers in this area. They build over historical houses. You can see very clear a new stones. These windows are settlers' windows here. We put this wire net to protect people come here from the settlers' rubbish and settlers' stones. Daily they throw this rubbish and the garbage here, even the dirty water and some cocktail motor here. Again, to the right here, we are not allowed as a committee to restore these buildings. The plan is to expand their settlement. They want to confiscate more land, to occupy more area here, to take over more roofs here. We cannot even restore or inhabit a new family in this part. They are throwing garbage down here on the inhabitants, and that's why they have to have the wire mask. It was mentioned in the Bible, as you know, and uh, unfortunately it's uh, occupied now for 43 years by the Israeli forces and this is the long uh, 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 occupation we had it in this century. If, I, if the mayor of the city or the governor of the city want to go to pray in the mosque, we have to cross four electronics gates. I think this is, you cannot see it any place in the world. I'm the mayor of the city. I'm not allowed to go to the streets and uh, around the Ibrahimi Mosque. And the main road between the southern part and the northern part of the city, which is the Shuhada Street, uh, which Americans, you, taxpayers of America, you paid $3 million to upgrade and to rebuild this street by the USAID on one condition to this street should be reopened for people and traffic in both sides, but since then now almost 12 years still closed. I'm not allowed to go there and I'm the mayor of the city. Don't forget the phosphorus. Don't get a phosphorus. Now I feel bad, Mike. Thank you. We have another one up ahead. These are your American tax dollars at work. But not all the money goes to this. Some of it goes to American cluster bombs. Where one of the guys said, take that. Maybe that'd be better than what we did. This is a large police station that the Israelis have built on Palestinian territory. It seems to be in the middle of an empty area, but the plans are for a new settlement if it is not controlled. When it comes to the people in Israel, I guess it varies. I mean, a lot of people say that what we're doing is very brave and that we should uh, keep on doing it. And, but 
I mean, at least from my personal <coughs> experience, I see that uh, usually it depends on your political opinion. Because the message we're trying to convey is not based only on our stories, but on the testimonies that we collect from soldiers, when it comes to the material that we publish, it's more than 500 or 600 uh, soldiers that already testified and told us their story. One example of the walls being built to separate settlements from Palestinian villages. This wall is built between a Palestinian village and its mosque, preventing inhabitants from going to pray. A map of East Jerusalem showing areas where the 200,000 Israeli settlers have now moved in and are starting demolitions and undermining other streets. Local residents are now speaking up. They are planning to outline all of the invasions on privacy, padlocks, restrictions, and lack of permits. It's important to recognize there has been no violence on the West Bank for a long period of time, despite Israeli incursions into Lebanon and Gaza. A destroyed Palestinian home in order to make way for an extension of a settlement. Imalia Domain is one of the largest Israeli settlements on the West Bank. Palestinian homes are being blown up. Palestinians get water rationed every two to six days, yet the flowers are growing in the parks at the settlements, and the swimming pools in the settlements receive more water than the rest of the Palestinian populations do in the same day. Mike Abel meets one of her cousins in Ramallah at a Quaker meeting. Her cousin is a piano instructor and teacher at the Friends School. This peace quilt was sewn by students at the Quaker Meeting House. Pacifism is still a major part of Ramallah and the West Bank. My name is Mustafa Barghouti. I am uh, an MD, medical doctor, like you, but in the area of cardiology. And uh, I worked as a medical doctor for a very long time. I used to work in Jerusalem. Hospital. I was born in Jerusalem, and since five years they don't let me go to Jerusalem. So they don't allow us to go to Jerusalem. I am uh, also active politically. I am a member of parliament, of the Palestinian Legislative Council. I was elected recently, not recently, four years ago, in 2006, in the most recent parliament. And uh, I am a leader of uh, a Palestinian party called Palestinian National Initiative, which is probably the youngest party in Palestine. It was founded uh, seven years ago by a number of Palestinian leaders and intellectuals and uh, community activists, including a probably well-known person to you, the late Edward Said. The Israeli government was controlling totally the West Bank collecting the taxes and spending most of the money on the army. So we were practically paying for our occupation. Mm -hmm. At the, that time, the expenditure on health was $600 per capita for Israelis and uh, $18 per capita for Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So we initiated this organization. For 25 years, we could not get a permission to function, to register. So <laughs> we just worked without permission. And um, I think we did a very good job because we introduced to the country the basic concepts of primary health care. And uh, the very best indicator of that, that between 1970 